Yo, what's good Keys and Queens? It's your boy Don and I'm back for another reaction video today. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell and hit all so you know every time I post you heard. If you're not new to the channel, y'all already know what I'm going to say. Thank y'all for popping back out. Thank y'all for continuously showing love. I appreciate y'all. Put y'all socials down below. I'm going to tag one of y'all. We're going to go from there, you heard. Today, y'all, we're going to be reacting to the 10 most powerful gangsters ever. Do you feel like you a gangster, you heard? You a gangster? Put your name down in the comments. Let's see if you a gangster. Let's see if you meet these gangster criteria, you heard. I'm not going to lie. I'm not no gangster. I'm not no gang nothing. I'm me, you are. We outside every day. You already know what's going on. Other than that, let's get right into the video. Let's see what's going on. Hit that like button. It's all free, you are. Let's get right into it, you are. Urban side. They were the ultimate villains. They lived life king size and ruled kingdoms with iron fisted methods. They made more money than is imaginable and spent Crap. on decadent luxuries and glittering parties. Their cruelty is legendary. Everyone, from judges, policemen, to senators and presidents, were in their pockets. They knew that real power lay with them and were not afraid to use it. Their lives are the stuff movies are made of. In this video, we've listed 10 of the most powerful gangsters of all time. All right. Here we go. You stay to it. Number 10. Frank, Frank Lucas. Lucas, you are. Frank Lucas. Oh, hold on, my fault. I'm Trump bugging out. Y'all let me know in the comments who y'all think is going to be on this list. Frank Lucas, obviously. Uh, the Royal Rick Ross, uh, cause I'm assuming we're going to talk United States outside of that. If you look at any mob, uh, mob crime movies, y'all got a lot of suggestions. Just put them down in the comments. I already know who I think is going to be on here. Um, just based off this one person. So let me know in the comments, which I think I'm going to get back into the video though. I'm not going to lie. Y'all just lost this light. It's bugging out right now. I don't know what the freak is going on. So no light for my face right now. 1960s and 1970s by using an East Asian connection during the Vietnam War, cutting off the Italian Mafia, who controlled the trade in this Harlem at the time. Lucas, originally from North Carolina, employed members of his family to take over the heroin trade in New York and New Jersey. Lucas would claim to have sold $1 million worth of heroin a Every day, day in his prime, and claimed to have a net worth of over $52 million on top of a large supply of liquid assets, namely oh heroin. Number nine, Griselda Blanco. Griselda? Griselda Blanco, also known as the Black Widow, or the Cocaine Queen of Miami, was a drug lord for the Colombian Medellin Cartel. Mm -hmm. She controlled the cocaine trade through violence and intimidation, making $80 million a month during the yeah. 1970s and 80s. Reports claim that at her peak, Griselda Blanco had more than half a billion dollars. Don't play well, After serving 10 years in jail on drug charges, Blanco would return to her native Colombia. Number eight, Anthony Salerno. Italian mobster Fat Tony Salerno made his millions running the numbers and drugs racket in East Harlem after most other Italian mobsters left the area as it became more black and Latino in the 1960s, making tens of millions of dollars. As the frontman for the Genovese crime family, Salerno was named the America's top gangster by Fortune magazine in 1986 due to his wealth of more than one billion dollars and influence. In 1988, Salerno was convicted of racketeering charges and was sentenced to 70 years in prison. Number 7, Carlos Leder. Leder was one of the founders of the Colombian Medellin Cartel. While in prison, Leder met Boston-born drug trafficker George Jung, who helped him import and distribute cocaine from his native Colombia into the United States, accumulating $2.7 billion. Cocaine made Leder so rich that he owned his own island in the Bahamas and offered to pay off Colombia's debt. Later, would eventually be extradited to the United States and sentenced to life in prison, which was reduced after he agreed to testify against former Panamanian President Manuel Noriega in 1992. Number six, Meyer Lansky. Lansky was a Jewish immigrant from Poland who would make a fortune of gambling, both legal and illegal. Lansky would join notorious gangsters Charles Lucky Luciano and Ben Bugsy Siegel to run a gang that would be known as Murder Inc. Lansky would later turn to focus on gambling, setting up operations in Florida, Las Vegas, and Cuba before the Cuban Revolution. In 1982, Forbes would name him as one of the 400 richest people in America. Lansky would be indicted for tax evasion and fled to Israel. He would later return to the U.S. to face charges and was acquitted in 1974. Lansky would die a free man in Miami at age 83. Number 5. Joseph Kennedy Joseph Kennedy is the patriarch 
heir of one of America's most powerful and prestigious families. One of his sons became president, another district attorney, and a presidential candidate, and another a senator. At his peak, Kennedy was one of the richest men in America. But, as the saying goes, behind every great fortune, there is a great crime. Kennedy was already in the liquor business before Prohibition, but, according to several books and gangsters, became a bootlegger with ties to the New York and Chicago underworlds after liquor was made illegal. After Prohibition ended, Kennedy made a fortune off selling legitimate liquor as well as through Hollywood and the stock market. Kennedy was named one of the 20 richest people in America in 1954 by Fortune magazine and had a net worth of more than $300 million, which nice. would be in the high billions today. It has been reported that Kennedy contacted mobster Frank Costello, who was known to brag that he was a bootlegger with Kennedy to use another mobster, Chicago's Sam Giancana, to help his son John get elected through his ties to Chicago and the unions. Number four, Amado Carrillo Fuentes. Amado Carrillo Fuentes was the head of the Mexican Juarez cartel. He was known as Lord of the Skies due to his private fleet of planes, including 22 private 727 jet airliners, which were used to import cocaine from Colombia to Mexico, where it was later smuggled into the United States. Fuentes had an estimated net value of $25 billion, almost twice as much as Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, and the DEA called him the most powerful drug trafficker of his era. He would die while undergoing plastic surgery to alter his appearance in 1997. Crazy. Number three, Joaquin Guzman Loera. El Chapo is one of Mexico's most powerful drug lords. He is the head of the Sinaloa cartel, which smuggles in billions of dollars from Colombia through Mexico and into the United States. Guzman became rich enough to make Forbes list of 1,000 wealthiest people in the world, as well as their top 60 most powerful people in the world, with a net worth of over $5 billion. Guzman was jailed in 1993, but escaped from prison in 2001, and is currently number one on the FBI's most wanted list, with a $5 million reward for his capture. Number two, Al Capone. Al Capone is perhaps the most powerful gangster of all time, and also one of the richest. During Prohibition, Capone controlled the illegal alcohol, prostitution, and gambling rackets in Chicago, which brought in $100 million a year at its prime. Capone's money allowed him to bribe police officials, judges, and even the mayor of Chicago. Unfortunately, he could not bribe the IRS, who convicted him of tax evasion in 1932 and sentenced him to 11 years in prison. Number one, Pablo Escobar. Escobar is perhaps the most powerful drug lord of the modern era. He ran the Medellin cartel, which imported billions of dollars of cocaine into the United States. Pablo's money brought him great power, as he was able to bribe officials or have them killed if they wouldn't take his bribes. Forbes magazine named Escobar the seventh richest man in the world, with a net worth of $25 billion. In 1993, Escobar was killed by Colombian forces with U.S. assistance after he escaped from a Colombian prison. That concludes our video of the 10 most powerful gangsters of all time. Let us know another one that should have been on this list. Nah, is that a couple more people? Like I mentioned a few that, that wasn't on this list. I like the list though. It's a good amount of people that I know that have made an impact in the crime, you know, area. If y'all know any other people, like I said, put them down below. We'll see. We'll try to react to everybody and see if they got other ones like this. If y'all want me to react to something else like this, let me know you are. Other than that, please follow all my social media. Everything is up there. Sorry for the darkness, y'all. My freaking um thing is out. But anyway, I appreciate y'all for popping out. Hold on. Let me see if I can get a better for y'all. Nah, that's it. I appreciate y'all for popping out. Continue to show love. Thank y'all. Yo, I'm going to see y'all in the next video, you heard. Peace. Love. Done.